Club fam and first time fam, welcome to another edition of Man to Man. I'm David Wazicki. And today we are going to talk to a brother that's been on my list for a while. And I'm not just saying that because he's here listening in. I uh, He has. And there, there's a few things you'll see why as we dig into the conversation um, that has me fascinated. There's certain parallels that I've ex- uh, experienced in my past that I would love for him to speak on in his past and, and we'll, uh, we'll compare notes there. <laughs> but in the meantime, let me give you a little background. He's a pioneer in the wellness space. He's an influencer, entrepreneur. More specifically, he's the founder of Fit Men Cook. And honestly, his, well, his wellness journey leaves me in awe. Um, so I can't wait to talk to the one, the only, the Kevin Curry. <laughs> <laughs> what's up brother <laughs> what's up man that was an incredible intro thank you you <laughs> that was nice <laughs> <laughs> we do what we do here make, make you feel yeah. all warm and fuzzy <laughs> you did you did i appreciate the welcome i'm really excited to be here yeah um look i like i said i i've been following you for some time on instagram mm-hmm. i i've mm-hmm. seen a lot of things here and a lot of things there rather, and, you know, certain things that I can definitely relate to. Before we go into that, as everybody knows with this podcast, if you're a longtime listener, and if you're a first time listener, we jump into a question um, to get you, Kevin Curry, blue check certified and get you approved around these parts (laughs) in the man to man (laughs) sphere. Uh, You ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Let's go. What does masculinity mean to you? Gosh, Um, I've never been asked this question before. And I think it's probably one of the hardest questions just because I've never really thought about what, what masculinity is because I Hmm. just am just, um, just being. And so I'd, I'd say the first thing I'd say, it's just being who you are and being solid in that being, um, being confident in who you are. When I think about masculine traits, there's, um, I, I think about things in a, perhaps maybe a too too conventional way in a sense. Okay. So, so when I think about masculinity, I'm thinking about being being a provider. Now, being a provider does not always mean money. It just means providing something of value to to the relationship that you're in to um, to mm. your family. Um, it, it, it means being being a safe place and, and a protector, protector of feelings, protector of of, of physical. Um, so, yeah, I'd say masculinity is all those things, but most importantly, masculinity is just being true to you um, and your own identity. Well, I love that, and you know, firstly approved. And, uh, I, I know sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a, it feels like a question, a question that puts some pressure on you, but no two men have ever answered that question the same. So that's one thing. And so I think to that end, it is quite interesting to me that this phrase masculinity just takes on so many different meanings for right. every single man that that's, that's in the hot seat with me. So I appreciate you for answering. I appreciate you for going there. And in terms of, you know, being true to yourself, I definitely now want to, you know, go back to memory lane, down memory lane a little bit and and just really let some people know, those who don't know about your story, just kind of get a background on where you came from to where you are today and, and really understanding this journey as it relates to food and this relationship with food. I, I, and again, this is one of the things that just hit home for me because I mean, I've, I've had the struggles and, (laughs) you know, I, I think some, you know, some of us have been there. I I can't say all of us have been there, but a number of us have been there. And as men, that's the other thing that I do love is that as a man, you have, been vulnerable in being able to speak about this. Usually we hear, you know, from, from the other side, the, the, (laughs) and, and in this case, we're, 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 we're hearing from you as a man, you know, growing up in Philly, raised, um, in Dallas and therefore being raised in Dallas, 
probably live in that soul food diet <laughs> lifestyle yeah, yeah. that we all know and love as a kid, right? But there's something to that, you know, soul food lifestyle where, you know, there, there's also some challenges and uh, as it relates to health and mental and all the things. So I will turn this over to you. Would love for you to give us some insight on your background yeah. and we'll go from there. Sure. You know, and I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. I am Southern, even though I was born in Philly, I'm a Southerner, so I can talk. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, Philly people yeah. can talk and talk. I was in an Uber <laughs> the, uh, just last year and I was like, oh my God, get me out of this Uber. This man will not stop talking. <laughs> so maybe it's the Philly in me, not the Southerner in yeah, me. I go. just realized that right now. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I think, um, you know, to understand my, my wellness journey, especially in food, you first got to understand my mental wellness journey, because I yeah. think that the two mental wellness and mental health are like inextricably linked to, yes. to um, food because it just impacts our behavior and the way that we feel about ourselves. Um, and that, and that correlates and that relates to the, the things that we choose to put inside of our body. So for me, mine started probably right after grad school. I thought that I was going to get married and stuff, and, and, and that didn't happen. And then the stock market went to hell in a handbasket, mm, and all yeah. the hard work that I thought that I had done <laughs> those past couple of years in undergrad and now in grad school were just worthless. And so I found myself yeah. back at home on my parents' couch trying to figure out life. And so um, I had always struggled with depression, but the way that I – can describe it now after just countless hours of therapy and meeting with, you know, with doctors and whatnot, is that sometimes depression and anxiety can lay kind of dormant. And yeah. sometimes like the perfect storm can just set it off and you just kind of keep going down this spiral. And it's difficult to really express to people because oftentimes, you know, people deal with circumstantial depression, like, like my goldfish died, my girlfriend or boyfriend broke up with me. Um, mama passed away, you know? Right, right. Um, and once that part is removed, that depression doesn't really have that lasting impact. But there are some people out there that just have chronic depression, and regardless of the circumstance, it just kind of stays. And mine is, and I'm one of those persons that just kind of has that like sticky depression, I call it. Mm, mm, and um, not knowing how to do that, I was just medicating with food and, and alcohol. I was yeah. secretly. Um, going out <clears throat> and drinking. Um, and this is me like b being broke as a joke. So just I'm talking about going going to the liquor store and buying the, the really cheap bottles of wine and sky vodka <laughs> um, that I can and then eating cupcakes in um, in the parking lot of, of 7-Elevens because I was just too embarrassed to, you know, to go wow. home um, wow. and show that. And so it, it just was just a big spiral. How I got out of that or how I kind of turned the corner were just a couple things. I had made the decision at one point that like this was going to be as good as it gets for me. And hmm. because of that, I need to go ahead and take matters into my own hands. And I had made a decision that it was just going to, you know, that, that I was not going to continue being here. And a therapist that I had been seeing I had stopped seeing her. I had stopped going. I stopped going to her. And um, the day, literally the day that I had planned this whole thing out, I get this call. And I'm talking about, I had planned it out to the point where I was meeting with my friends and family without them knowing it. And, wow. you know, just spending like that, you know, like one last moment with them. Yeah. And I got wow. a call from this therapist when I was with my friend. And she says, hey, I'm so sorry. This is against protocol, but you have been on my mind so heavily. Can you please come in and see me? Hmm. And I was just shocked. And yeah. so I went in. Um, you know, the next day I said, all right, I'll go on and give this a chance. And she just began to peel back the onion a lot more than she had in any other session. And she got and she asked me about my drinking. And this was the first time I had really, really confronted it, especially, the, you know, with the alcohol and food. And she says, yeah. OK, you know, how much are you drinking? And I just told her, I was like, well, not that much. I'm just drinking about three bottles of wine and two bottles of vodka each week from Thursday to Sunday. 
And, and I said it just very casually. And she said, yeah, yeah. okay, do you think that's a lot? And it was in that question, her just saying mm -hmm. that, it woke me up. And I was like, I've never thought about that before. And so that was the beginning of my, of my recovery, getting me in front of a doctor, going to, you know, like to deeper counseling. And I'll tell you why that was so important. And I'm starting with this is because I, I grew up in the church. My father was a minister of music. I was in church oh. all day. You know, wow. I'm one of them kids okay. that was just like, oh my God, this is so long. I can't wait yeah, to hurry yeah, up yeah. and get home. <laughs> right? Same. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Sunday school, the, you know, and everything else. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I, I say that because this is really prevalent within the black community. Um, these ideas that we can just pray away certain things and we don't need yeah. like a lot of help. And I yeah. had beat myself up thinking that my faith wasn't strong enough. And because of that, I'm not going to blame religion because it's personal responsibility, but because of that idea that, that even my faith wasn't strong enough to heal me, I'm going to go ahead and do something that was going to be um, not great and permanent <clears throat> to my life. Right. So it was through that therapy, and she was a Christian counselor, and she's the one. She said, "No, if you have cancer, Kevin, would you be getting chemo? If you have the cold, do you take do you take cough medicine?" And I said, "Yeah." And she said, "Well, this is no different. Some people just need more help than others." So, I I like to share that story, and I and um, you know, especially with with men, with black men, because I think sometimes that is the beginning of addressing any issue is the mental wellness piece. And when Absolutely. you look at what we have to deal with in society, um, <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a whole lot. And we need that outlet. Yeah. Now I, <laughs> firstly, thank you for <laughs> being so open and, and vulnerable with your, with your story, because it is a lot. And I, I believe with myself and, you know, I've, I've mentioned on other previous episodes, my struggles with depression and some of my, um, I don't know, I call it regressions here and there. So I, I don't know if I fall into a chronic lane, but, uh, you know, uh, with a professional label, but I do have those moments and I can recall back to like the hardest point of, of my depression where, now looking back at it, food, environment, people I was around, people I was listening to, all of these things, they all take effect. They all have something to do and contribute to your mental health. So mm -hmm. it's, I, uh, you know, I appreciate you bringing this up because that this is the part of the mental health that I always feel like is missing. It's yeah. people use food as uh, escapism, as med self-medication, alcohol mm -hmm. as self-medication, and you don't realize the harm that you're adding and piling up to your mental health. It's, it's, right. it's one and the same. The, the, you know, there are these studies that are out now, which are beautiful that they're coming out now at, at this time, but that connection to the mind and the gut, the connection to they're interchangeable. If you mess up your gut, you mess up your mind and, and vice versa. If, if your mind isn't there, then your healthy habits aren't there and forget about movement, forget about, you know, everything right. else that, that exists right. out there. It's <laughs> who cares? Um, so it's, it's being able to un understand the connection and that mind body connection and I'll you know go further mind body spiritual connection however <laughs> to the point that you tapped on religion uh I won't go too deeply there uh but it is a, <laughs> it is a trigger for me because I grew up with the same thing it was like oh you could pray everything away oh you're just <laughs> not praying hard enough oh you're just you just don't have the faith that 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 God can take you and take your depression away and take your this away and that away and it's more than that. And God interchangeably so has put those people on this earth and given that knowledge Correct. to help you. So you can yeah. do both. You can't, right? You can see a right. therapist and pray. You, you, you can speak to both, <laughs> right. you know, it, it's, yeah, it's possible. It's, it's so true. Um, 
you know, a couple things, you, you know, you're so right about mental wellness being connected to your gut. When people think of feeling good, they always think about the term serotonin, right? It's that little drip yeah. that makes us feel good and alive yeah. and, you know, we love it, right? The highest concentration of serotonin is actually in our guts. So when it, so what we eat actually does impact how we feel. That's why the yeah. whole idea of comfort food, it is a myth, right? You'll, yeah. you'll love those first two or three bites. And then afterwards, you're feeling so bloated and lethargic and sweaty and just like, oh my God, I just don't, I hate the way I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Your mood changes. Yeah. So it is very important what we put into our bodies. Um, and as it relates to, to the faith thing, that was something that I've struggled with for a while. And now I'm to a place where I can look at, you know, I, I used to term mama and them, you know, the old, the old, <laughs> old yeah. you know, the older generation, mama yeah, and yeah, them, yeah. with a lot more grace because you see mm -hmm. the times that they grew up in versus the times right. that we're growing up in now. And, you know, like their biggest thing, their, their worry wasn't, they didn't even have time to have mental health issues to even address <laughs> right. it. We just want to be able to eat a burger in here. We just want yeah. to be able we, not to be called we, out of our name. We just want to yeah. have a job, you yeah. know? And so yeah. I don't blame them now for that, for that perspective, but we've got to evolve too as a community to understand that our, you know, to understand that our needs are actually complex and they mm -hmm. have to be addressed and some things can't be addressed through faith um, right. solely. Um, right. Because like you said, professionals in medicine are answered prayers as well. Yeah, no, well said, well said. So, so you get to this turning point. Yeah. Um, c coming out of that. So when did the food come into play? So you get your mental health right. on track. So now you're able to <laughs> be open to other changes for yourself for the better. So when does the food change happen? So the food change happened around the same time. I started to mm. feel just a little bit better, and I wanted to work out a lot more too. And so whenever people w want to lose weight, we always just start running or getting really active and physical. But I knew sure. that I needed to actually do something like with my diet. So um, I went to Half Price Books because I couldn't afford a trainer, and I bought almost every book they had there about nutrition. And not even recipes, but just like, hey – what's a protein what's a carb what's a fat what are calories and why do they yeah. matter because i'm just like yo you can't be going to grad school and you just oblivious to everything else <laughs> i mean bro right. you can pick up a book and read it <laughs> you know yeah. and that's what yeah. i did and and i went to the half price bookstore to go ahead and do that and i went into the kitchen and i just began to um, teach myself how to cook and i started out by taking foods that i really really enjoyed and then I would deconstruct them. So here mm. in Texas, we've got soul food and we have um, Mexican food, right? So yes. I love Mexican food. I would eat it at least like three times a week. So my first meal was like a quesadilla. And I was mm. like, all right, Kevin, like what are the main ingredients? And how right. can you put in healthier, leaner swaps into each one of those? And that's what I did. Um, and I just began to lose weight. I felt better. Um, and the whole way that and the reason why fit men cook exist is i was trying to gain the system right remember i was on on food stamps so i didn't have money to pay mm. people to help me out so i was thinking let me just share out every single meal that i'm eating um and hopefully people that look the part that are trainers <laughs> will just share back and be like yo well that's good but eat more of this too do do less of this and more of that you know, and I was trying to basically just crowdsource my diet. And what right, I realized right. that there are people out there just like me who were tired of eating the same darn thing every single day to lose weight. And that's how the community um, was started. Yeah, I, I like that. That's the exact phrase that was popping up in my head, crowdsourcing. Uh, it seems <laughs> like you were, you were like one of the early ones that, yeah. that started crowdsourcing. But it's awesome that you crowdsource for your health you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and for your diet, dietary changes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you crowdsource, you, you start cooking, mm -hmm. but to your point, you cook, but you see certain bodybuilders, right. And it's like yeah. chicken breast, broccoli and white rice. 
chicken breast, broccoli, white rice. Then you eat a this for lunch. Then you eat a that for breakfast. And it's the same thing. They just, this yeah. is all you're eating and it's plain and it's basic. And you're like, there's got to be more to life than just a yeah. plain piece of chicken breast and broccoli and rice, right? Yeah. You know, um, and I give a lot of credit to the bodybuilding philosophy and ideology because their approach, basically meal prep is something that bodybuilders actually created huh. from that fitness community. Just because if you think about it, hmm. what they, they have to be so particular about what they're putting into their bodies. And so their main thing is I've got, I've got to always be prepared because they are going on a lot of, I say flavor starvation diets where it's just the mm. same thing and they eat, you know, so you like, there's no, there's no like variety. So they have yeah. to be, be prepared because bodybuilding is much more of a mental game as it is physical. In fact, it's right. way more mental than it is physical. And so I, I took the, those concepts of being, of being prepared. I was broke as a joke. So I had to, you know, I like do everything like on a budget. Sure. And then it needed to be practical because I'm not Gordon Ramsay. I don't know how to go into the kitchen <laughs> and make a cordon bleu and stuff. So that's right. how I just started just kind of piecing things together. But it started by taking meals that I really enjoyed and deconstructing them. And then another thing was like, all right, well, let's take the, these bodybuilder meals of chicken and rice. Okay, let me see how I can turn this into a fried rice with some egg whites mm -hmm. in there instead of the whole egg, using some spray oil, reducing the calories, chopping up the chicken, seasoning the seasoning the stuff. Yeah. So you you're go. taking these 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 ideas, and then transforming them, making it palatable, um, you know, like for you and your diet, but also complementary to your wellness goals. And that's what it's all about. That's what I tell people that it's not. You don't don't just look at something on the internet and just copy it verbatim. That's fine to go ahead and do, but for the long haul, you're gonna have to learn, right? right. So, right. how would you tweak this recipe for you and your taste buds by still not inflating the calories a whole bunch, changing the you know the flavor profile, swapping in a different protein, swapping it in like a different vegetable? That's how you know like you live it for for the long haul. Um, I feel like in society with, with everything is that we treat food like it's a technology and we treat diets right. like, it's, like, like it's a technology, like it's just instant. You yeah. know, we want the yeah. instant food and we want instant results, right? But life is not instant. Yeah, You can be gone in an instant, but life really isn't, is, is not instant. It's a long journey and that's a great thing. So enjoy the journey. It's like when mm. you go on vacation, take your time. Don't just speed through everything. Take it all in. Look mm. around. Treat life that same way. I love that. I love that because now you're tapping into mindfulness and, and yeah. presence and being present. <laughs> and it's so funny because I think there's something I, I've, I've caught you speak about either it was early on or maybe something recent, but the importance of communal eating mm. and the importance of, uh, you know, eating with friends, eating with family. Yeah. And by virtue, that helps you to create home cooked meals, which in yeah. <laughs> it also helps you to know what's in your food, but also right. helps you to enjoy your mood, your, uh, excuse me, your food more so. And should increase your mood. I mean, as long as you like your family, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when, when you do have those I'd Sunday dinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's that is battered and deep fried within the black community and black culture. Mm. That's where we're from, you know, in terms yeah. of like communal eating. But from yeah. a dietary standpoint, it's so important. What um, I I brought up communal eating when I was trying to get my my parents to have better choices, to make some better choices, you know, when it comes to food, because here's the idea, here's the absolute truth. Someone's going to be upset when I say this, but your mama's sweet potato recipe isn't that great. It's the same one that everybody else makes. All oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> your, you know, your uncle's ribs are just the same ones that, you know, that my brother makes too. Damn. Period. <laughs> they just are. Right. Yeah. I, I, I but, feel the upset. Yes, everyone's like, no, you ain't have mine yet. All right, sure, yeah. I'll have it. And I'm probably, and I'm pretty sure, <laughs> unless they're doing something <laughs> radical, like, yeah. you know. Um, but the whole idea behind that is that mama's sweet potato pie tastes good. 
because mm. mom made it. Exactly. And you can think about when you bite into it. I remember the first time I bit into it and we were sitting around the table. We were in, in Louisiana with the family and so-and-so had burned up the mac and cheese. So mama <laughs> had to go and do that. And so all of a sudden, those positive memories are associated like with that food. So you yes. look forward to it every year. It tastes yes. good, but it's also a feeling of like nostalgia. And so what I was trying to get my family to see is that Let's make brand new memories with food. Mm. Let's create that. So I don't know. Let's make a quinoa salad. And mm. if we don't like it, that's fine. We're joking around about it. But if we do, you know, what, what you do is you associate all of that positive energy around food. And so when I say make new memories, adventure out, try new things. So that way, whenever you have it just on your own, you're like, I remember the first time I had hummus. I was over here in this country and it was yeah. so darn good. This one over here sucks, but this was so good. I love hummus, <laughs> right? Right. right. Um, and food tastes different based off of wh where you are too. You can have a margarita right now in your home. You have that same margarita on the beach in Mexico. And I guarantee you're like, this is the most amazing margarita ever. Yeah, it's the ever. same one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but our environment influences how we interpret taste. Think yeah. about that. So whenever you want to, so this should be an invitation for everyone listening to go and explore food, get your friends and family, mm. get other people, you know, and do that. And I guarantee you, you will enjoy it so much more. Ah, I love it. I love it because this is hitting on all the things I've learn to believe I, you know, it's the same, it's the same as you going on this journey and getting all those books. Same. I've done it through podcasts and books and online, this and online that it's, um, because you don't know what you don't know. Right. So what you're bringing up right now, even dissing soul food, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't just soul food now. I love no, this. Soul soul food. Food. I'm just I know, I know. Yeah. I ain't that spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> not that great but the, the yeah, same thing we're the, all eating <laughs> there you go there you go but being being able to once you dig in and you know you realize there there is so much more that can be learned into what you said at the top of this taking control taking ownership into being able to change course now with that said, and before I jump into um, something else, I just want to quickly ask, so then if somebody is on the soul food diet, the typical soul food diet, not the I have deconstructed or yeah. watch Kevin Curry deconstruct something and make it you know, healthy and probably more delicious than it was, um, what can, what's someone's first step if they're not you know, the person like, I don't know where to start. How do I get started yeah. on this journey? How do I start eating better? Where can yeah. they start? All right. So you sometimes you, you don't even have to start with food. You can just start with certain behaviors. So mm -hmm. for me, it was soda. So drinking several sodas a day. Oh I went, God. I started yeah. to cut yeah. down on that little by little. So instead of drinking three sodas a day for a full week, I only drank two. And then the next week, I only drank one. And after that, I was doing a soda every other day. And then after that, I was doing a soda maybe once or twice a week, right? And in between, I'm learning about like infused water and teas and non-sugary mm. beverages like that. And I'm like, oh, this stuff yeah. ain't so bad. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you can just start with an actual behavior. I don't recommend people just to go cold turkey and try to overhaul their diet overnight because you're going to get get like burned out that way. But on the topic of soul food, if you're just eating the typical soul food diet, which is delicious, yeah, you know the the cool thing about soul food is that you can you can actually tweak a lot of it. So I have taken, you know, like I love greens. I've taken some greens, and I have deconstructed the recipe, and I've made, you know, all right, well, let me have a greens medley. So I'm not mm, cooking it okay. for. 20 hours <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. just for hours on end they're yeah. vibrant so i'm gonna hey you know what i'm gonna have collard greens i'm gonna have kale and i'm gonna have chard in mine i'm gonna mm. put some garlic in there i'm not gonna use the bacon I use a little bit of olive oil use some spices and all of a sudden it's good now listen it's not gonna taste like the original recipe but it's not supposed to 
Exactly. It's not supposed to. It should remind you of the essence of that. So yes. little by little, you just begin to build your own diet. The thing that's going to stop most people listening here is watching everybody else and trying to do their journey yeah. instead of just focusing on them. So if that means you just got to work on that one thing in this one meal, then bro, you just go and do that. Yeah. And you'd be proud of that. And, but when you look back in about a month, you're like, yo, this wasn't so bad. I'm going to try this too. Then you got two things that you're doing really well. And you're like, mm. yo, this is manageable. Let me do three things. And all of a sudden, you will look back and it will feel like it happened overnight, but it happened over time. And the good mm. thing about your change is that it's sustainable. There we go. I love that. Love it. Love it. So for somebody and for the somebodies that are listening right now, let's um, shift gears. So I, I appreciate all of that and I wholeheartedly support that approach. What is your approach on a daily basis, whether it's mind, body, and or soul? What does like if you when you have, I should say, that perfect day of <laughs> or close to a uh, uh, perfect day of daily routine or mm -hmm. rituals? What what does that look like for Kevin? Um, I, I guess I mean I don't even sure how to even answer that. I'll just tell you what I do like day to day. I I budget in my schedule time to work out, and I realize that for me, it's got to be in the first thing in the morning um, mm -hmm. because once that 5 o'clock time hits, if I even sit for 30 seconds on my couch oh my God. after 5 o'clock, there is no way you are getting me to do anything at all. Yeah. Yep. So you got to <laughs> – so I start by budgeting in like for my day – at the five o'clock hour from five to seven is when I'm doing something active. And when I'm doing something active, I'm also spending time with Kevin. So I'm either listening to a podcast. It can be, um, I like to listen to, um, to Bishop Jakes and, and, um, and Joyce Meyer just cause she, I don't know, something about her voice is really soothing. And I also just listen to podcasts, but the most important thing is that I'm just spending time with me. I'm not checking email. I'm not responding to text starting off the day just in silence. Um, I call it having a soft start to the day and not a really hard one. Mm, um, yeah. Then like just have my first meal. My meal is usually kind of prepped. Um, it could be either um, some oats or um, it, I'm, I talk about a variety y'all, but I'd be eating the same thing just because <laughs> it just works for me. <laughs> it works for me. I'm not, I, I put seasoning on mine though. So I'm different. But I go. eat the same thing. I just, you can, you know, um, it's probably going to be like some avocado and eggs. If I want to have some toast, I have some toast. If I want to have a little oatmeal, but I just keep it really manageable. Something that I can whip up together in about five, five, five to 10 minutes max. Have my lunch. I'm doing, going about my day. Either I'm filming or I'm in meetings and whatnot. Um, and then for my lunch and my dinner, those things are already prepped. I'll, t I'll mm. prep twice a week. I'll prep once on a Wednesday and then once on a Sunday. So that w I used to prep for the entire week. And if that works for you, it works for you. I think it works also for Instagram and for social media. Yeah. People love seeing that. Like, ooh, just yeah. cook once all week. <laughs> Y'all throwing that food away. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By Thursday, you're trying to drown it in sauce or try to come up with a, well, I had gone out with my coworkers and that's why I couldn't right, eat. Right. No, you didn't want well, to eat because you were tired of it. But <laughs> <Yeah>. it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to lie. You ain't, you ain't got to lie to kick it. You know, <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, so I'll, I'll prep twice. So that way I have some variety and it could be the same meal, but what I'll do is maybe I'll swap out a vegetable, I'll swap out a grain. And so that's the variety kind of tricks me into eating something different. Um, and then I, I'd say something is a little bit different this time is that, um, I've been trying to, I try to give myself at least one physical goal, physical challenge oh. that I'm just trying to work on. And okay. so last year I had the crazy idea to start doing some, some triathlons. I had no idea, first off, that they were so expensive. And secondly, how much yeah, time are. it takes. So mm. in the evenings, I'm usually doing like some triathlon training. I'm in somebody's pool trying not to drown 
or, or <laughs> riding through the neighborhood and, and jogging. So right, that's right. usually my day. Dope, dope. I love it. I love it. And I love at the heart of it is practicality. Uh, yeah. Because, again, we overcomplicate this thing. We overthink this thing. And it really... Once, once you get the basics down, like you said, it, it really can be and should be a, a simple a simple thing with so many beautiful benefits tied and attached to it. Um, oh man, I, <laughs> Kevin, I, yeah. So I want to get you back on here later. There's uh, later this year, there's something huge that you're going to be announcing. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can tease a little bit and, and let the good folks know what you're cooking up pun intended yeah <laughs> yeah i i have wanted to for quite some time now be able to cook for people on a nationwide sense mm. and taking the things that i have learned and the foods that i prepared and offering that up to people um across the nation and i think that i'm very close to um, being able to do that you, you talked about something in the very beginning, which kind of like relates to this. And you're like, you're a little bit atypical because you don't really see a lot of men talking about this kind of stuff or in this yeah. space. Yeah. But I would just say even more than that, you know, you don't see um, a lot of black people within the wellness space in terms of food. We right. are there. We're very present. But in terms of the rhetoric and the paradigm and what people look at in terms of the face of wellness, it doesn't yeah. necessarily look like us all the time. Times right. are changing and they are getting better, but there's still that gap. And so what I'm really happy about doing is being able to provide options for people that, you know, from a black man and showing people that, you know, wellness looks like everything. It looks like the rainbow. Everyone yeah. is, yeah. you know, is, con is, is concerned in some way about how they move, how they feel, how they operate. And being able to do that through food is such a great opportunity. And, uh, and, and I'm excited that I'm going to be able to have that one prayerfully um, but by the top of the year. So I'll be back um, in the fall to, to lay some like specifics, but I think you know where I'm going. I do, I do, and I love it. And uh, we'll leave that as a cliffhanger. <laughs> 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 um, Kevin, thank you so much again uh, for this conversation and going man to man with me today. It's been a pleasure. There's just so much more I want to dig into, and that's why I'm um, thankful we're already uh, prepping a part two uh, follow-up <laughs> conversation for this. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to let the the good folks know, Black Love Fam, where uh, you can be followed at. And if there's anything I'm keeping out, please do let me know. But you can follow Kevin at Fit Men Cook on the gram. You can go to the app store and check out the Fit Men Cook app. And you can keep up on all things at fitmencook.com. Want to make sure I enunciate it all <laughs> <laughs> so, so they get it. Um, is there anything else that I'm leaving out that, oh, when you have an amazing book that, I mean, shot up the charts not too long ago. Yeah, so yeah, the book. Yeah, the the book did did very well. It published in in December um, of 2018, and did a, did a great tour um, around the nation. And then COVID happened; everything shut down. But I'm really proud of that book. So if you are trying to get started with meal prep, just go on to Amazon and type in Fit Men Cook, and then. Um, I also have my own line of spices, and I've got a mm. meal planning journal that I'm really proud about. Um, you can go to thefitcook.com, or you can go to fitmancook.com too, but it's thefitcook.com to grab that meal planning journal. Um, it's a three-week journal to help to guide you to being a lot more mindful about your eating, so that way you can mm. be aware of what you're putting into your body, help you prepare and whatnot. It's not supposed to make you obsessive. It's supposed to make you aware. Because most people, if I ask you right now, what did you eat yesterday? You wouldn't be able to tell me. So this journal helps out with that. So that way, then when you're putting foods into your body, even if it's a snack, you'll stop to ask yourself, am I really hungry right now? Or am I just bored? Am mm. I really hungry? Or am I thirsty? Am I thirsty? Mm. Or am I hungry? Yeah. Things like that. Love it. Love it. Oh my God. So many tools. Black Love Fam, 
tap into all of it. These are beautiful resources for us, clearly by us. So <laughs> I am all about this life. I am all about the Fit Men Cook movement. Uh, can't wait to have you back again, brother. Um, so much. In the meantime, Black Love Fam, make sure to tell another brother, king or queen, about Man to Man so we can keep conversations like this going and Amen. keep building each other up. And if there's someone you want to hear on Man to Man, connect with me on Instagram, W-A-S-I-C-K-I. And I'll do my best to bring them on here and, and keep these convos going like I just did here with Kevin. Till next week, peace, love, and keep cooking. So, oh, sorry. I thought you, I thought you were pausing for me to be like... <laughs>